Sprinkler timers are also called controllers, smart controllers, or clocks, and are used to turn on and off automatic sprinkler systems. These timers range from basic to feature-rich units. This video will provide you with the information you need to select a controller that will best meet your needs. Sprinkler controllers are most often called timers, and they come in a wide range of makes and models. It's essential to choose a controller based on the size of the sprinkler system and any specific landscape requirements that you may have. Because of the many different needs and applications that exist in landscaping, most of us are faced with the question, which timer is best for me? There are actually only five significant factors that really affect your selection. First, whether or not you want your timer to be smart or conventional, the operating location, the number of zones it needs to control, the number of programs the unit needs to run, and finally, any other additional features you want your controller to have. Some questions to think about as you're shopping for a timer are, how complicated is it to program the clock and calendar functions? How detailed do you want the controller's schedule to be? Does the unit allow for seasonal adjustments? Does the model you are considering have functions for daily, weekly, and monthly scheduling? There are two main categories or types of controllers, conventional and smart. A good conventional controller has all the necessary features that are typically needed for most of your watering needs. Conventional timers are usually hung on a wall in the garage, and that's where you have to stand and enter all the watering program information using only the unit's dials and buttons. One of the most significant drawbacks is that when performing maintenance or making programming changes, you have to walk back and forth from the timer out to your yard to turn it on and off or advance it to the next zone. Then head back outside to view your results. A very time consuming and tedious activity since you have to repeat this process for each zone. A smart controller, on the other hand, has Wi-Fi or cellular connectivity, allowing you to use your computer or mobile device to program and operate the unit from any location, even if you're away from home. No more tedious walking back and forth between the timer and the yard. Just use your phone, tablet, or computer to activate the smart controller. Some smart models can even notify you when there's a problem, like a broken sprinkler head, or a valve that isn't working correctly. Even more advanced models are capable of automatically programming themselves based on the watering needs of the landscape. Next, let's look at where you are going to locate your controller. Sprinkler timers come in indoor or outdoor models. Indoor models are not weather resistant and come with an attached external transformer that plugs directly into the wall outlet. You never want to locate an indoor controller outside. Typically, indoor units are hung on the wall in a garage, closet, shed, pump house, or some other structure, like a barn, but always near a power outlet so you can plug in the attached power cord. The critical thing to remember when choosing the location for installing an indoor model is that you always have to protect it from the effects of mother nature. Outdoor timers, on the other hand, come with a weather-resistant housing and are more durable than the indoor models. And although they are designed to be hardwired directly to your electrical system, an optional power cable, commonly called a pigtail, enables the unit to be plugged into a standard wall outlet. And since outdoor timers offer more features than indoor units, installing and using them in indoor locations with the added pigtail has become very commonplace. Large outdoor models come equipped with advanced features that lets them be configured for a greater number of stations. Your sprinkler system design should divide your property into watering zones or stations. The typical residential sprinkler design has between 2 and 12 zones. Commercial designs might have as many as 48 stations or possibly even more. As you compare the available controller models, it's essential to know how many zones your system will have. And if you are upgrading an existing model, you must get a timer that has at least the same number of stations as your current unit. It is also a good idea to choose a timer with a few extra stations, in case of future landscape remodeling or expansion like adding a vegetable garden. The number of zones in your system is equal to the number of control valves it has. By merely counting the number of wires that are already connected to the terminals inside your timer, you can know how many zones your current controller operates. Many manufacturers have the control valve terminals marked and numbered, like what you can see in this controller, which has six wires attached to the control valve terminals and a common wire. This system has six zones. 
The word program, when used in connection with a timer, refers to the set of watering instructions for the number of zones that will run during a planned watering cycle. The more stations you have running on separate schedules, the more programs the timer must be able to store in its memory. Most timers can run up to four different programs, often labeled as program A, B, C, and D. And finally, it's time to choose what additional features you are looking for your timer to include. These extra features and options are a matter of personal preference and are not critical to the sprinkler system functioning correctly. With this in mind, we have compiled a list of questions for you to answer that will help you make an informed selection. Do you need the controller for drip irrigation? You can have a drip zone on the same timer that runs the high volume sprinkler stations, but typically it's set up on its own program. Will you place the timer next to a wall outlet or will the unit need to be battery operated? A battery operated sprinkler timer is an ideal solution to use in a remote location that doesn't have electrical access, like for a ranch cabin, the median, or at a park. Do you need or want the timer to be connected via Wi-Fi? Remote access for programming and control of a timer is handy during setup and maintenance. If you use well water, does the timer have a pump start lead? This important feature combines irrigation and pump control by turning on the water pump relay and activates a zone control valve at the same time. Does your controller of choice allow the installation of a rain sensor? A nice additional feature that automatically shuts off the sprinkler system when rain is detected, not only conserving water and saving you money, but also prevents your plants from being overwatered. Does the timer have non-volatile memory? Typically, battery backup is only for protecting the watering schedule programs. It doesn't actually run the system, and for an extended multi-day power outage, the battery will eventually die and the programming will be lost. Non-volatile memory, also called flash memory, maintains the program data and watering schedules without battery or AC power. Or is a hose end timer the correct timer choice for you? Less expensive controllers can be difficult to program and may be less durable. And don't feel like your options are limited. Outdoor controllers can easily be used inside. Just add the appropriate pigtail adapter to your cart. Thank you for watching this video on selecting a timer. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to get the most out of our user-friendly Shop and Compare web store. From Sprinkler Warehouse, this is Alfred Castillo Jr., the Sprinkler Warehouse Pro.